Good evening, and welcome to, to another one of my episodes of A Versus Day Keeps the Muslims Away. Today I would like to talk about stoning. S something that a lot of people say that only occurs, that actually does not even occur in Islam. Something that's only available in the Bible, in the Torah. However, in Islam, stoning does not exist at all. Um, <clears throat> I checked in the Quran and the word Rajamah, Rajam is to stone, uh, occurs six times. Uh, whether it was in context, out of context, whatever, but it does occur. Somebody had said it never occurred. Uh, today, however, I'll be using al hadith. By the way, to all Shia, Shia out there, the Sunni say you're not Muslim. So apparently, I'm very sorry. Um, you're, you're not Muslim. So therefore, 15% of the Muslim population has already been gone. There's 85% left. I want to share with you today four little stories that give you an idea about the mentality of stoning in Islam and even though that the Quran might not specifically tell you to stone someone, let's see how the Prophet Muhammad acted upon it and how, how Muslims in general act upon it. The first story I'd like to share with you is from Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, book number 56, hadith number 829. <clears throat> Narrated Abdullah bin Amr, a Jew and a Jewess were brought to Allah's Apostle on a charge of committing an illegal sexual intercourse. Allah's Apostle said to them, What do you find in the Torah about the legal punishment of a rajim? A rajim, remember, is a stoning. Uh, they replied, But we only announced the crime and lashed them. Abdullah Bin Salam said, You are telling a lie. The Torah contains the order of Rajim. They brought and opened the Torah, and one of them solaced his hand on the verse of Rajim and read the verses preceding and following it. Abdullah bin Salam said to him, Lift your hand. When he lifted his hand, the verse of Rajim was written there. They said, Muhammad was telling the truth. The Torah has a verse of Rajm. The Prophet then gave the order that both of them should be stoned to death. Then Abdullah bin Umar continued saying, I saw the man leaning over the woman to shelter her from the stone. This is also mentioned, the same story, uh, in also Sahih al-Bukhari, book 56, hadith 829, and also Sahih al-Bukhari, book number 82, Hadith number 809. I'd like to analyze this real quick. So, <clears throat> a lot of people say that, and, and I'm not trying to turn this into a you know, religious sermon or anything, but they say that the Quran is a re religion of peace and it doesn't have any violence, particularly stoning. Stoning is something that only the Jews and the Christians have because it's written in the Torah and the Bible. Um, okay, so here we have people you know, living in the seventh century who abide by the Torah and they have committed an illegal act of intercourse. And yes, it does state in the Torah that the punishment for them should be stoning. However, they kind of got with the times. You know, they're like, yeah, we know the Torah kind of says that, but we're just going to hide, you know, we're just going to hide that line and say, you know, that doesn't really... Because, I mean, they, they, apparently they didn't do that. They said they would whip them, lash them, and publicly humiliate them. Okay, I, I, I mean, that's an okay punishment, for, you know, for back in the 7th century. But no, Muhammad goes on to prove to them that the Torah says they must be stoned and orders that they be stoned to death. Because he's such a pious man and he's such a good-hearted man who wants people to live their religious, their religious piously. So he wanted them to be good Jews and be stoned. Moving on, the next one I want to go to is... <clears throat> I call this one the, confess the confessing man. This is also Sahih al-Bukhari, book number 63, hadith number 195. Narrated Jabir, a man from the tribe of Bani Aslam came to the Prophet while he was in the mosque and said, I have committed illegal sexual intercourse. The Prophet turned his face to the side. The man turned towards the side towards which the Prophet had turned his face 
and provided four witnesses against himself. Remember, you have to provide four witnesses in order for something to be true. Um, <clears throat> on that, the prophet called him and said, Are you insane? Are you married? To which the man said, Yes. On that, the prophet ordered him to be stoned to death in the musalla, a praying place. When, when the stones hit him with their sharp edges, he fled, but he was caught later and at al harra and then killed. Just kind of keep the story in mind. I will go back to it in just one second. Now, the next one I want to go to is also in Sahih al-Bukhari. It's, it's kind of long, so I'm just going to summarize it for you. It's, it's kind of like a, pretty much a long story, but it's located in Sahih al-Bukhari, book number 82, hadith number 826. Essentially, here's what happened. Um, <clears throat> there was a man, and the, actually two men came up to the Prophet Muhammad. One of them was the father of a son, who claimed that his son was a laborer working for this other man. Now, the son had slept with the man's wife. So for all intents and purposes, we'll refer to the one man as the father, the other one the husband. So the father says, um, it has been, I have been told that my son should be stoned for his sins. However, I have given the husband, this other man, 100 sheep and a slave girl for the, for the sins of my son. Prophet Muhammad thought about it and said, said, your son should receive a hundred lashes and be exiled for one year. And, and now I'm going to start quoting. <clears throat> for one year. And then he ordered Unayis al-Aslami to go to the wife of the other man, the husband, and if she confessed, stone her to death. She confessed and she was stoned to death. All right, let's, I want to tie this back to the previous one. The pre, in the previous version, we had a man, a man come up to Muhammad and say, I committed adultery. Muhammad turned his face. Didn't even want to hear it. Talk to the hand. I don't want to hear it. He brought four witnesses to witness against himself that he did commit adultery. I guess he was an exhibitionist. Um, so Muhammad then said, are you married? And when he said, yes, I am married, then he had no choice but to order him to die, to be stoned. However, for this lady, all that was needed was her own confession. If she confessed, stone her. I thought she was supposed to bear four witnesses as well. Um, isn't that what, what the other guy did? And why did the man who actually also committed this intercourse with her was only lashed and set, you know, exiled for one year? I kind of see some inequality here between men and women. Um, the next one I'd like to go to is Sinan Abu Dud. This is where <clears throat> narrated Aisha. The Apostle of Allah, peace be upon him, said, the blood of a Muslim man who testifies that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is Allah's Apostle should not lawfully be shed except only for one of three reasons. A man who commits fornication after marriage, in which case he should be stoned. Two, one who goes forth to fight with Allah and his Apostle, in which case he should be killed or crucified or exiled from the land, or three, one who commits murder for which he is killed. And that's, like I said, in, in Sinan Abu Dud, book number 38, hadith number 4,339. So, again, I thought Islam didn't have that kind of punishment. I thought Islam didn't have stoning. Now, if you think that, you know, this is, this is not the way that Muhammad actually does it, that that stoning is not something that the Prophet would have condoned. I would like to take you back to Sahih al-Bukhari, book number 82, hadith number 803. When the latter stoned a lady to death on a Friday, Ali said, I have stoned her in, in according to the tradition of the Allah's Apostle. So 
Obviously, Allah's Apostle had set a tradition, had set a way, had set a regulation of how to stone a lady, how to stone someone. And, and here, Ali is, is justifying that he stoned this lady on Friday. Um, he did it properly. He did it the way that Muhammad had set forth for him. I guess that's all I have for today. And the next time somebody tells you that Islam is a religion of peace, there's, there's no orders to kill, and especially no stoning, because I've seen this before. I've seen, I've seen people say, there's not a single mention of stoning in the, in, the, in the Quran. Well, yes there is. Six in the Quran, and hundreds in the Hadith, and there are many instances where Muhammad himself made the order, and probably I'm sure he was the one, for, one to cast first stone. Alright, you have a good night, and see you soon.